Welcome to Sunday Worship at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Orrstown, Pennsylvania. This is August 23, 2020. I'm Pastor Bill DeHass. I serve as Interim Pastor of the Congregation, and I welcome you to this time. We continue to provide these videos, which are shortened versions of what we're doing on Sunday morning, and I hope you'd be blessed as you participate with us today. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, with all your faithful followers of every age, we praise you, the rock of our life. Be our strong foundation and form us into the body of your Son, that we may gladly minister to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. This is a reading of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew in the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples who people say that the Son of Man is. And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus. Amen. When I was growing up, I used to watch the TV show Perry Mason regularly. I was always flustered because I could never figure out who the guilty party was, though I knew it wasn't Perry Mason's client. And to me, Perry Mason also always seemed so smart because he was able to figure out who was ultimately responsible for the murder each show. Well, recently I found the whole Perry Mason series being aired on one of uh, the channels, and so I'm recording them and able to uh, watch as I have time. Well, one big revelation occurred to me as I watched the shows again. The reason I could never figure out who the guilty party was is because critical information was kept from the audience until that point in the show when Perry Mason would finally break down someone on the stand and get them to confess. I mean, no wonder when I was younger I could never figure it out unless it was a lucky guess. The right information was never revealed in real time. I think about that when I hear the story of Jesus taking his first disciples to Caesarea Philippi and asking them, who do people say that the Son of Man is? Now, Caesarea Philippi, because of its location at the edge of Israel's territory and, the, and Gentile territory, is, is uh, very important here, very symbolic. Caesarea Philippi is about 25 miles north from Jesus' home territory of Galilee, Admittedly, it does seem strange that Jesus would take such a long trek to have a short conversation with his disciples. But it's important to note uh, what Caesarea Philippi was all about. Uh, first of all, it was a place where the worship of Baal, or sometimes we say Baal, uh, came centuries before. In older days, Israel often ran after the worship of Baal instead of the Lord God. This was also the place where Herod the Great built a wonderful palace to honor the godness of the Roman Caesars. And then in Jesus' own time, Philip, the son of Herod, had dedicated the temple there to Augustus, and the place became known then as Caesarea Philippi. Well, why is this so important? 
Uh, I think it's because Jesus took his disciples to the very place where both foreign worship and where the current worship of uh, Roman Caesars had a stronghold. It was a place of great worship for gods that were not the God of Israel. And so right here in this very place, it symbolized the breadth of pagan worship and also the worship of the Roman Empire. Jesus asked his disciples, who are people identifying him as? Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And so almost like me on the Perry Mason shows, uh, trying to figure things out, uh, the disciples are saying, well, some say that you're John the Baptist, returned from the dead. Others, one of the great prophets from history, Elijah or Jeremiah, perhaps. But then Jesus asked the critical question, who do you say that I am? And at that very moment, Simon Peter speaks up, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Bingo. Peter, for all his failings and faults, he gets it right. And this is more than just naming the right answer, the, more than just saying the, the right name, almost like the adage that goes with uh, children's messages when the pastor asks the the kids a question, uh, the answer is always Jesus. Uh, but this is more than that. This is more than just about saying the right name. To call Jesus the Messiah means that he is the true king, and therefore that cannot be Caesar or the Roman Empire. And to call Jesus the son of the living God means that he is the revelation of the only true and living God, and not any of the Baals of the world. And yet for Peter, this was not a lucky guess. As Jesus says, this has been revealed to him. Well, how did that happen? I'd suggest that it was revealed to Peter by Jesus' teachings and healings. It was revealed by Jesus feeding the multitudes and by Jesus walking on the water, just to name a snippet of all that had been revealed during the time that Simon Peter had been with Jesus. In other words, it wasn't some secret transmission or dream. It was revealed to Peter, Simon Peter, and all that Jesus was saying and doing. And so Jesus calls Simon Peter blessed. And here he gives him the name Peter, the rock. And on this rock, Jesus said, he would build his church. It's often said that the church was really just an afterthought or something that Christians put together after Jesus didn't return immediately after the ascension. But that's not true. Jesus says very clearly here, that the church is Jesus' design. And it was to be built on Peter and ultimately all who confess that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Now, people have argued over the centuries whether Jesus' statement is about a person, Peter, and ultimately then the Pope and the papacy, or is Jesus really talking here, the rock is Peter's confession? Uh, it's really that statement of faith that is the rock. Well, most likely it's all of that. And it continues today. It continues as we gather regularly to be in a time of confession and forgiveness. To declare together that we believe in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It continues as we bear witness to the world in word and deed about who Jesus really is. Every time we gather together in worship, every time we gather together at a meal, every time we gather together to serve the world around us, 
or to connect with one another in concern and love. You and I continue to gather to bear witness to Jesus. And in turn, we bear that witness to others in the world. We continue to join Simon Peter and the countless millions and millions over the years who pass on what has been revealed and believed. You, Jesus, are the Messiah, the Son of of the living God. Amen. Confident of God's care and upheld by the Spirit, let us pray for all who are in need. Gracious God, bless the church that despite the hardships experienced during this pandemic, the Christians around the globe will stand firm on the rock who is Christ. Support pastors, deacons, and congregational committees during this difficult time. Give wisdom to churches that are considering when and how to resume their communal worship schedule. Bless the earth that it may be safe from ecological harm. Restore all lands and seas to the beauty and vigor that you intend. Protect animals whose habitat is endangered and train us to be gardeners of your creation. We pray for those who are suffering the effects of destructive summer storms and scorching heat. Bless the leaders of nations that they may govern their people with integrity and attend to the needs of the poor. Guard the United States from violence. Give clear purpose to protesters and to police. Inspire our political parties to conduct the election season with honesty and respect for all. Bless our various means of communication, our phones, the internet, our postal service, and delivery, and delivery businesses that our communities may be sustained for fruitful life together. Bless students now as they are returning to uh, their classes, or whether their learning will be at home, that all may be kept safe and able to learn. Uphold faculty and families to protect all who will be affected by the opening of schools. Form college students to conduct themselves with maturity. Bless all who are in need, all who have tested positive for the virus, the sick and the dying, we pray for the unemployed, for medical workers, for those seeking a vaccine, for those who are overwhelmed with anxiety about the future. We pray for those that we name before you from our hearts now. And finally, we pray for ourselves that with Christ as our rock, we can stand firm. And we praise you for the lives of all your faithful people we mourn the death of those we have loved. Bring us at the end, we pray, into the joy and gladness of life together in you. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you.